Natasha. Debbie. Show. The show. <laughs> Welcome to it. <laughs> Just two patriotic girls. Learning about the world. So please, don't take us the wrong way. So, if you look at this, and then you got that, right? And, and hey, Elvis fan before anybody. But right now, not that he was in Nashville, but Tennessee. Right. <laughs> I'm winning as far as music goes. Yeah, you are. I win. I, I tend to like Pink Floyd better than I like country music, but country music's okay. It's not just country, but... So, hit that like button if you like Pink Floyd... And hit that like button if you like country music. No one likes country music. Or rockabilly or uh, <laughs> jazz or anything else. <laughs> and consider subscribing <laughs> to the channel. And hi, by the way. Um, we are excited about this video um, that we're about to do here in just a moment. Um, and I have a lot of questions. So I'm hoping you guys are willing to answer in the comments. But um, we did take a look between differences um, between British and American pubs over a year back. Mm -hmm. um, and that was interesting, different, um, but we've still not fully understood the British pub culture. Yeah, like, what is it? What's it mean? What happens? Is it just going out and picking up people? Because that's what we do here. That's what our bars are. That's how we got each other. <laughs> well, listen to this music, get drunk, and hopefully you meet somebody you, you like. That's the pub culture in America. No, but um, we really truly don't understand the pub culture in the UK. We hear about it all the time, but... We don't get it. So today's episode is the Great British Pub Culture Explained. Now, if you know our channel and you know me, I'm an avid connoisseur of water, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I don't drink. Um, recovering alcoholic, 18 and a half years, almost 19. Mm -hmm. um, and I will just say this too, if anyone watching this um, has a problem or I know someone that is, um, please go back, take a look at a live video I did here on YouTube uh, back in December. And, um, you know, don't be afraid to, to talk about it. So, exactly. And I'm very proud of you. Oh, thank that. you. I appreciate that. Um, so without any further ado, we're going to sit here and we're going to try to listen, learn, watch, understand, hopefully in this very short video, some, hopefully we'll get a good picture here. Hopefully of we'll get a good idea. The great British pub culture we've heard so much about. One of the great things about England is pubs. My whole love of journalism and debating came from just observing people in the pub. The Great British Pub has been the backdrop for debate, conflict, and even love. A place open for all, from geezers to hipsters to ladies' nights out. We all mix together as one, and that's how it should be. It is the backbone of British culture. Go to the Winchester, have a nice cold pint, and wait for all this to blow over. Huh. So today we're going to explore this fascinating culture. Dirty we're going to go dicks. through its history, its controversies, and whether it's going to survive in the future. This is the story of the Great British Pub. British have a famous reserve when it comes to being sociable. Oh, and everything about the pub is micro-engineered to break down those about social barriers okay. and to enable people to talk to each other. Oh. Pub is short for public house, with its origins dating as far back as 43 AD to 410 AD, really? and it came from the Romans as they occupied Britain. However, pubs as we know them today would really become popular in the Victorian era. There were communal meeting points that typically the working class could go to and enjoy themselves. Mm -hmm. Pubs fall into a few different categories and they have changed a lot over the years, but let's start with three basic ones. Firstly, you have the traditional pub. Okay. These are often housed in like historic British buildings. Typically, there'll be laws and regulations over how you can change the building's exterior as a way to preserve the culture. So this means there's regulations over about how you can change the buildings. I just want to say, we've every British pub we've seen, freaking beautiful. Mm -hmm. They are. Yeah, I was uh, just about to stop and, and comment that I love the look of these pubs, at least on the outside. Yep. Hopefully we'll get to see a little bit more inside. And we do have quite a few that look like that here in America. Mm -hmm. um, some are just typical American pubs, and some are wannabe British pubs. Exactly, wannabes. Yeah, wannabes. <laughs> and then you get inside and it's like, what is this crap? Yeah. What is this fakeness? <laughs> what is this crap? Um, but no, it's uh it is they are very beautiful and they have a, a certain like magnetism. Like mm -hmm. I want to go in there. Yeah. And uh, I have a question about me going in a pub here in just a moment for you guys. 
exterior as a way to preserve the culture. So this means there's very low ceilings and very low doorways because apparently people were smaller back then. A lot of the interior is made out of wood. There's wooden beams everywhere. Okay, there's that. usually an open fireplace and it's designed to feel like a nice homely, cozy living room. When it comes to drinks, they'll serve a range of beers, ales, ciders, and they might even offer traditional pub food, which we would call pub grub. Now let's move on. Okay, there's a question I had right there, and I'm glad you brought it up. So, been told many times, don't get fish and chips in a pub, go to a chippy. Mm -hmm. And uh, he brought up pub food. What pub food? What do we order at the pub? What is the good thing to order? We need to know that. <laughs> yes, we do. That's vital information. Please let us know in the comments, what do we get there? Because I have no what clue. What is the best pub food? Yeah, because yes. if I see fish and chips in the menu at a pub, even though I know not to, I'm going to. <laughs> you gotta try it, probably. <laughs> I just don't know what else to try. So please let us know what is that pub food we should be eating. Ales, ciders, and they might even offer traditional pub food, which we would call pub grub. Now let's move on to the next pub, and that is the country pub. And every country village needs a country pub. Now, as the name suggests, a country pub is far out in the sticks, way away from what they would refer to as city folk. Why this is different from a traditional pub is that traditional pubs can exist in very urban areas. Okay. <laughs> The atmosphere of a traditional pub relies on its surrounding area. It might be a bit more fun, a bit more lively, <laughs> and there might be, God forbid, young people in there. Whereas the country pub is quite the opposite. The country pub is more quiet, more cosy, more chill. It caters to the locals who will look at outsiders with a, a little bit of scorn. The local- Before you say what you're gonna say, mm -hmm. I don't wanna forget. It's like that place, the pub in American Werewolf in London. That's what I'm thinking, <laughs> right? Is that what a country pub is? Where everybody's sitting there like, mm. <laughs> no? I have no idea. I was just going to ask, so would the older folk in the urban area go to the country the pub? pub? Would they go out to go to a country pub? Or is there one just more in the urban areas Good that question. tend to serve more of the older crowd? Or do you all just commingle? That's a very good question. Locals have typically lived in that town for generations and generations. It is and like a miracle. Their children's children and their grandchildren. And they still recognize you, still know you. Good night, Miss Page. Good night, Sam. Good night, John. Good night, Teddy. And then lastly, we can throw in brewery taps. A brewery tap is a pub that's attached to a brewery. They brew a beer. Sorry. This is what we have in abundance in America. Oh, yes. And here in Cincinnati, there's one on like every corner. Mm -hmm. um, this has taken over the pubs, the bars. Mm -hmm. That is the thing now. The restaurants. Yeah, you're Every absolutely right. Every restaurant is now a brewery. Yep, and it's absolutely annoying for mm -hmm. us anyway. I don't know how you guys feel about it. Sorry. Brewery taps. A brewery tap is a pub that's attached to a brewery. <coughs> they brew a beer on site and they sell it there. And these pubs tend to look a bit more industrial and are more yep. used Same as here. a marketing mm -hmm. tool for that. Beer. Interesting. But for now, let's get a feel of what it's like to step foot into a traditional. Yes! Well, here we go. All right, so picture this. It's a Wednesday, you finish work, it was a bit stressful. <laughs> and so what do you do? You of course venture down to the pub. Which pub will it be today? Will it be the famous cock, the red lion, the horse's mouth? And so you approach the front door of the pub and you, you push open the door to be greeted by another door for some reason. There's always <laughs> these two doors. Instantly you hear Mickey and the boys sat in their usual spot, shouting about some political thing that they read in the sun. Listen here boys, you know what I'd do if I was in charge, if I was Prime Minister? Yeah, what's that there, Mickey? I'd get a whole lot of them, take them outside and I'd shoot them. Yeah, that's about right, Mickey. In the corner of Mickey's eye, he sees you as you walk in. The whole table's attention turns. Here comes trouble. You exchange niceties for a couple of seconds and then Mickey, he'll escort you to the bar to go get a drink. These particular gentlemen are who you would refer to as the geezers. Okay. Yeah, are you trying to wind me up? I'm not trying to wind anyone up. I'm fucking serious. These are working class lads. They could be anywhere from the age of like 25 to 55 really. Might be a plumber, a sparky, a carpet fitter. You know, guy. proper man's jobs. They're not going to be in the HR department working in diversity and inclusion. Now what's very interesting <laughs> about the geezer is that the geezer exists within all British men. No matter how middle class you are, whether you shop at M&S or Waitrose, the infectious charisma and energy of the geezer will undoubtedly rub off on you at some point in the night. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> it's kind of like your regulars that are in the bar all the time. Yep. It, it's very different. The culture already from what we're learning here, it's it's quite different. Mm -hmm. It is. Mm -hmm. You don't really have meeting places necessarily with 
the Not whole so much. with the whole group of people, like other than your work friends that you mm -hmm. just do it every now and then. But yeah, I don't know. It's, it's interesting. Who's that? Well, this is what's your name? Steve. Steve. He'll be joining us. Why? It's usually what? around sort of beer six, maybe seven. You'll leave your table, you head to the toilet, you might wobble there because you're getting a little bit intoxicated. And as you go for a piss, the door will bang wide open. Mickey walks right in, stares next to you, and he turns to you and he says, You watched the game last night, mate? To which you'll panic because last night you're at yoga and you need to now come up with a cover story. And so you will reply, Nah, not me, mate. Mrs. was having none of it. You know how it is, mate. But this brings <laughs> us on to our next pub goer, Middle Class Michael. What a nice Middle class, Michael. Pub. Yes, it's a lovely pub. Now, middle class Michael, he probably works in IT or marketing or something like that. And I'm loving this. He's come from work, so he's wearing his nice smart shirt, but he's, you know, he's undone a button, he's letting loose. He'll be somewhere <laughs> in his late 20s to 30s. He probably lives in central London or some kind of city. But Michael, too, is welcome into the pub. In fact, all of his friends are welcome to come in and speak at an appropriate volume. Until about his fifth Copperberg, where he starts to <coughs> find this feeling, this foreign feeling, which is called self-confidence. And he'll start speaking louder and louder until they're throwing up in the toilet. Huh. Next up you have the old boys, aka the locals. There you go. These are men from the age of 60 to about really any day prior to their death. They're drinking <laughs> proper drinks, you know, they're drinking stout Guinness. They all of course dress like farmers. They love Jeremy Clarkson. <laughs> they hate young people. These are the main demographic of any good country pub. And we're here in Killarney because we've been invited by a very special character. I hear he's a local legend. Sam, how are you? Go on, my dear. But then you get a few <coughs> special guests, such as tourists, who are typically American. They're wearing some bright t-shirts. Hey. They've got a, a bum bag no. to keep all their things in. No. And they're saying something about how authentic this place is. It's so quaint. It's so British. <laughs> and then you get families. Oh, I forgot to say you have the alcoholic who sat in a corner murmuring. He just nailed that. I can't wait to go walk into pub and be it, like, this is so quaint. This is so British. And I'm going to walk in there with this shirt on and be like, freaking American. <laughs> I, I do have a question, though. Um, as you guys know, I don't drink. So, do I should I even go into a pub? Like a genuine question. Like, do other people who don't drink go in? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, here in America, you pretty much don't if you don't drink. And I really don't go to bars here anymore. I haven't in years. Right. Um, I, I'm not tempted, you know, to drink when I go because I'm much stronger than that. Uh, my recovery is much stronger than that. But um, I'm asking because you know. I feel like there should be more to this, and I, I think there is, is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. What he's saying, there's more to it than just sitting down and drinking and getting drunk with your friends. So I'm just asking, you know, what would I, do other people like drink other things? Or I mean, is it frowned upon? I, would I be looked at strangely mm -hmm. if I ordered a Coke? Yeah. Um, no, I wouldn't order a Coke, but either way, uh, you know, like a club soda, something like that. Right. Um, and how would I order a club soda? That may sound silly, but do you order, or is it just That's honest, fizzy water? Question. You know, sparkling water? I don't know. I have questions. I need your help. <laughs> but yeah, I just wondered, like, is this a place I should go into? I would like to experience it mm -hmm. and, you know, see it um, and order the food that hopefully you'll tell me what to get. But exactly. um, I just want to hear from you, you know, people like myself. What do we do? I don't know. Very good question. British. And then you get families. Oh, I forgot to say you have the alcoholic who sat in a corner murmuring to himself. It's a pretty sad sight. Pretty sad. But then finally you have one other group who sometimes show their face in a pub. Who? And that is women. Hey! It's so much fun. And what's interesting about the pub is that pre-World War II, to see a woman in a pub was a very rare sight. It was frowned upon. It yeah. was a cultural taboo. Do you object to me being served alongside you here, yeah. sir? I think for myself that the, the place for women is the, the saloon bar or the lounge. Why? It was kind of like that so that husbands and wives could be away from each other. <laughs> so that men Sorry. do men things. Yeah. Say naughty words. But nowadays you get what is called a ladies' night. Now this is the one yep. night that ladies have decided they're going to go to the pub. They've spent three months over WhatsApp, organising, arguing, falling out over this night. It's a big night for them. It could be a hen do, a birthday. And they will arrive at the pub dressed in their skin tight dresses, <laughs> drinking gin and tonic, holding their purse. They're loud, they're passionate. That's an America too. Mm. You'll have one in the corner crying her eyes out as she's staring at her phone, texting away furiously. Another being kicked out by the bouncers as she vomits over herself. <laughs> That was me. <laughs> it's quite a sight to see, you know, an image that I'm sure the suffragettes never imagined would happen. And I have to say that that's exactly how it is here. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's exactly the same with women here. Mm -hmm. No difference. Any day of the week. Every day of the week. <laughs> yeah, every. 
It does look inviting. And so what I'm hoping that you understand is that the pub is really a place for everyone. You with all your mates and is you it? can all you're all having a laugh and you're all doing everything. It just it seems to be like the catalyst to make a good time. However, over the years things have changed a lot. Now I'm worried about the closure of pubs. The one more than 150 pubs have closed their doors for good in England and Wales. They face a cost of living crisis head on. Now look, it's never been easy for pubs when it comes to laws. It's been like this tug of war between the government and pubs for a very long time. And that is for the simple fact that alcohol is a bit troublesome. Yeah. Yeah, that happens. In 1552, the Ale House Act was passed, where pubs would be required a license from a local authority mm -hmm. in order to be able to sell beer. Right. In 1830, the Beer House Act came along. New laws would pop up, like a legal drinking age. Also, opening hours were pretty tight. But by 1960s, the laws were relaxed somewhat. So from here to about the 2000s, things were flourishing. Having a simple bevy with the boys had evolved. Now you could walk into a pub and there might be things Things like pool tables, dartboards, and it's a five point oh, round. You go into any good pub and Americans do play darts. Yes, we, we have dartboards in the bars. We also have the pool tables. We yes. play more pool, but we play darts, and I'm awesome at it in my mind. <laughs> Sorry, I just hear that a lot. You guys all play darts, right? We do too. It's like pool tables, dartboards. And it's a five point round. You go into any good pub and there will be locals who are insane at pool and dogs. Same. They'll come in with their own cases, their own yep. sticks, Same here. their own table if they could. And if they get good enough, they can enter professional leagues. Mm -hmm. They can become professional athletes. I mean, take Phil Taylor, for instance, a professional darts player. Look at him. He is your typical pub goer. But look, if darts and pool isn't what you're into, there's something for everyone. You might be more into board games. Mm -hmm. You go, you grab a board game in this box that looked like it survived World War II, <laughs> or you could attend a quiz night. Town yes. of Leicester is the birthplace of which James mass Corden? murderer? It is. But really it would be in 2007 where things would take a massive turn. Oh really? Where pub culture as we knew it would be gone forever. No. A countrywide smoking ban went into effect in the UK on Sunday. Mm. The smoking ban. When smoking ciggies were banned from pubs, this was a major issue in Britain. Make a place for the smokers and a place for the non-smokers that's segregated off. Not herders out here like bloody prostitutes standing on this corner, which is what you feel like when you're standing here with a cigarette. I'm not joking, this was as big of a deal as Brexit, Trump, trans athletes. And this is where the government had proposed huh. that we were no longer allowed to smoke cigarettes inside of a pub. Okay. There was uproar from landlords to pub goers, where the classic atmosphere of a pub, you know, where you open the door and a now here we're not allowed to smoke inside either. But the difference is here versus there is states. Mm -hmm. You know, the states get to make their laws. So we live in Ohio. No smoking in any restaurants, any bars, anywhere. Mm -hmm. Nowhere. Go 20 minutes down, cross the Ohio River into Kentucky, smoking cigarettes in the bar. Yes. And the restaurants, some of them. Mm -hmm. um, so, hmm. Now the interesting thing though for us, I thought for me, was, you know, going in some of these places that, you know, you had smoked in for 50 years uh -huh. and then still smelling it. Yes. It like, replace smells. the carpet if you're going to do that. Otherwise, it was kind of pointless. But mm -hmm. um, I had no idea this was, like, kind of the downfall. Um, a lot of bars, though, in, in, in Ohio here, they've made an outdoor area that's nice. You know, in the wintertime, they have heaters and things like that. Yeah. So you're not freezing. Um, they've made these outdoor places that are really mm -hmm. cool, like gardens in the summertime. And a lot of people will be out there anyway, smoking or not, just because being outside with their friends. Right. So I wonder if it's like that and maybe we'll learn, but um, it wasn't a big controversy here though, because, and I think the difference in the culture mm -hmm. with smoking is quite different in Europe versus America. You smoke in America, you're automatically looked at like you have leprosy. You are. And you're judged. Yes. You know, um, you're highly judged for being mm -hmm. a smoker here. I don't know if that's really true over there. I, I, I'm not sure. So anyway, sorry. We just like to give you guys a little tiny bit of information for sure. our country too, if yeah. hopefully you appreciate that. Landlords to pub goers, where the classic atmosphere of a pub, you know, where you'd open the door and a plume full of smoke right. would come out <laughs> like a dragon's lair, would now be replaced with breathable air. And we couldn't have that. And it's true, it was part of the atmosphere, but ultimately the ban passed and you had to go outside and smoke cigarettes. Yeah. From this point on, traditional pub culture only really got worse and worse. With the rise of social media and home media, people didn't really need mm. to leave the house to get entertainment. True. On top of this, the younger generation were, God forbid, 
drinking less. And there's been a constant decline in pubs throughout England since 2000. But Yes, boys, how you doing? Are you all right? Yeah. yeah. On top of this, alcohol is easier and cheaper to get a hold of from supermarkets. We, as a society, have a greater variety of things to do. You don't just have to sit in a pub, you could go get a coffee, you could go for a meal. And so as pubs become less popular and the cost of living goes up, there has been a major decline in pub culture yeah. across Britain. But look, it's not all bad news. There is a light at the end of the tunnel, and that light is Weatherspoons. Today I want to talk about one of the great British institutions. Weatherspoons. Now, Weatherspoons is a. I swear this was in that one video we did with Evan Edinger. Uh -huh. Wasn't it? When the London uh... things not to do in London or whatever, and he said, don't go there. It was like a chain. Yeah, he I said think it that's was, what he said. Maybe he was referring to the food. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Sorry. Traditional pub. It's kind of this pub bar hybrid. It's like a super chain that exists all across Britain where it takes our favorite elements of traditional pubs, the way they look, the way they feel, combine that with incredibly cheap beer and food, and it attracts a more wider demographic of young people and older people. And I think at this point, it's pretty safe to say that Weatherspoons, or spoons as we abbreviate it to, has kind of become a British institution in and of itself. Yeah. It's the start of every good night out. It's the place we love to hate, but inside we all have a soft spot for it. It's still got all of the fights, all of the political debates. The owner, Tim Martin, literally did a Brexit tour around spoons. And it's even got love. Personally, I think as a society, tradition is really important. It's what makes culture so unique and fascinating. It makes people want to come and experience them. So next time you're at your local boozer, grab yourself a pint, take a sip and look around for a second and appreciate everything that's gone in to the Great British pub. Okay. We learned a lot about the pub culture. Yeah, definitely more information in this video than the one we did over a year ago. Mm -hmm. But again, that was comparing differences. I had no idea about the country pubs. <laughs> no. Um, I could tell by movies we've watched that there were differences in some of them, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I thought that was fascinating though. I thought that was just a difference in location, not that, you know, that it was definitely a different type of pub. Yeah, well, I think kind of a combination from what we learned there, maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but hearing about the, the, we've heard from friends on our Patreon and stuff that pub culture was kind of going downhill. The pubs weren't being as frequented and I didn't know why and I, they didn't specify. Mm -hmm. And um, that makes sense. Everything he said at the end there totally makes sense. Now I know here in America, um, the younger generation I, I've read online are drinking less. I don't see that though, do you? Um, with all the microbreweries and breweries popping up and um, I think, I don't know that they're drinking necessarily less like times per week. I think it's more just from talking with people at work. Now it's just, they go out to dinner or they get together, have a drink or two, and then they're done. I still would really like to come and try out going into a mm -hmm. British pub and I'd like to try all the ones. Oh yeah. Um, but again, I don't know uh, what to order food wise. Help me. Um, what, what, what are the, what are the, uh, Non-alcoholic drinks, yeah, like I mean, the sparkling waters, the club sodas. And how would I be looked at, looked at for that? Now, I don't care how people, you know, think of me. Mm -hmm. I just want to know what to expect. I think it's kind of, it was interesting to see how everyone kind of gets a couple drinks in, loosens up, and everybody starts talking to everybody. I like the different people he portrayed. Like we it's, can do. <laughs> yeah, and there's there are quite a few similarities, but mm -hmm. definitely in general, like looking at our bars, out the exterior and interior, and looking at your pubs, yeah, yours is way, yours are cooler. Mm -hmm. Much yours are, cooler. <laughs> yours are much cooler. Anyway, I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please hit that like button. Consider subscribing to the channel. And we'll be back soon for a new episode. So until then, please love like Jess. Be as strong as Tyson. See you next time, guys. Bye. Bye.